We're at 7.05, we'll start our workshop portion of the meeting and then um, proceed to our regular meeting at 7.30. For the workshop, we're going to hear from Mr. Clark on a local law um, being prepared by the city council. They've asked us to review this local law and this is to rezone 6 Commerce Street from R1.75 to the CMS district. Um, so this um, this came as a, at a request from the owner of the property. Uh, the city council does not have to entertain rezoning requests, but they can if they want to. Uh, they decided after hearing from the applicant and um, getting my recommendation, they um, decided to go forward with a draft law and set a public hearing and uh, refer to the county and and uh, refer to the planning board. So that's where we are. Um, this is a one parcel on Commerce Street, which is one block off Main Street. You can see it on the map here. It's that little jog in the line. Yeah. So this is the Central Main Street District. There's Main Street. And um, one block off is this R17.5, 7,500 square foot per unit. Uh, residential district and then over here you can see there's a transitional district right there's sort of in between commercial and residential a little of both <clears throat> so this property was previously a single-family home it's a it's an old second empire house that's been redone um, and the owner would prefer to use it as commercial it's surrounded by commercial uses um, his argument was that it's more in the CMS district than it is in the other one. The only reason it was left in the R17.5 was that it was a single family house and single family houses aren't allowed in the CMS district. So the last time we redid the CMS district, this was pulled, in into residential. pulled out into the R1 district. Um, but there's good arguments uh, why this should be in the CMS district, just a contiguous Properties are in the CMS district. It's not conforming to the R1 7.5 district. The square footage on this lot is um, So there it is in the aerial So you can see it compared to these 7.5 district houses to the south. It's much smaller It's a third of the size for a legal lot in that district. Are you sure you can What's that? that screen? You can see the area oh. going on in that one. Yeah. Huh. Well, I don't know why that's the way it is. <laughs> just caught up. Just, yep, there you go. Yep. It's slow. Um, so it's a very small lot. Um, it, um, it's almost entirely building. It has one parking space. Now, I went there, you know, I looked at it a few, a month or so ago when it was first put up. Now it's, Completely different. It's been recited. It's yeah, it uh, they've opened up the area to the east of it as a sort of an open courtyard. I'm not sure. It seems to. I think they share ownership with the building in front of it, the old mechanic bank, the five-story building. Um, it has some strange things. Otherwise, though, it has a big dumpster enclosure on the corner there that wasn't there before, which I'm not sure how that happened. The east corner. Uh, the behind Bank Square, north of the west side. Northwest. Yes. So over here, there's a big dumpster enclosure now, fenced in, yep. which wasn't there <coughs> last time I looked at it. And I'm not sure how they did that without site plan approval. And there's no parking, but we have it has no parking one way or the other. We have waiver. We have two parking spaces right now, and that's where it's going towards. So from that end, it's not even that's significant change right and we have so, waiver capability would it require if it had house if it had apartments in it would it require to have commercial on the first floor with the apartments no, above because it, it doesn't face on main street in the cms district it faces on main street it has to have a commercial frontage on the, on the ground floor but not if it is in the back 
So they could put two apartments in there, they could put an apartment and a commercial use on the ground floor. They could put all commercial in. They would have a lot of flexibility on that property. It's not a very big house. So I don't, I'm yeah. not sure what the interior stairs or anything like that is to use as a commercial space upstairs. I would doubt that that's an elevator. Are there any other parcels like this that might come along sometime in the future that you could pull into this as well, or uh, just sort of as a cleanup? The only one I can think of that's in it on a CMS block yeah. that is is the building right behind the Holland Center, which is in the residential district, or it's in the T district now. Transition. Yeah. But that's on the same block as all the rest of the commercial uses on, on that block. Um, and I don't know if you've been by that house lately, but it's been greatly expanded. Yeah, there's some significant work going on there. Right. But it, but it's still a single family house. As far as I know, I don't know. That's my understanding. Yeah, it's in the T district, so it could be converted to an office use or some other. Um, there's a limited number of non residential uses that are allowed in the T district. Um, but this, this one, I think, is an anomaly. Um, yeah that has no real justification if it's not going to be a single family house. Yeah. I mean, it seems cut and dry. Um, how, how do you imagine we could be of best use to the council? Well, the council wants a recommendation as to whether they should go forward with the rezoning. So that would be... Would they do it without our yes, input they anyway? They, they don't have to follow your recommendation, but my experience has been is they carefully follow your recommendation. I know. That's very, that's very thoughtful. Uh, and then, so your recommendation means a lot to the council. Aw. <coughs> what do you they think? They only care about your recommendation. Oh, no, no. I, I, like I say, just on its face, there is a good logical consistency argument for yeah. including it in the CMS district based on where it's at geographically. If there's no reason, considered reason, this is being exempted from that zoning district in the first place, I don't see why that change shouldn't be made. Yeah. What do you think, Randall? I agree. Same. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I think they have a recommendation that this is a, a logical, sound approach. So um, you want the attorney to draft up a uh, positive recommendation to the yeah, council? Yeah, so when we get to the, this item on the regular um, meeting agenda, since we're in workshop now, we mm -hmm. have to take a vote. Yep. So that'll make that part of the agenda pretty straightforward. <laughs> yes, which is why we like to talk about this local volatile stuff. Love it. And we have a whole ten minutes to spare. <laughs> what are you gonna talk about? <laughs> yeah, this is great. I have a uh, off the uh, wall comment or question for um, for for developments that have provided recreation space, green space in their um, development, is there any mechanism for the city to monitor the um, maintenance and upkeep of those spaces? Thinking of the one in particular, um, one East Main Street has a small area on the south side against the Hudson Valley Brewery that was provided as green space and <coughs> it's looking really sad. It's like, sad. yeah. <laughs> well, if it's on the site plan as being maintained, it can't be enforced. Are you talking on the one East Main property adjacent the, to the tracks? It's in the, it's in the parking lot, basically. Like, I, it's, oh, it's, oh, in the back. Okay, I got you. In the it's back. It's 1 East Main Street, and it, it backs up against Hudson Valley Brewery. Like, there's a few benches, and a couple of trees were planted. Ah. It's on the south side of the parking lot. So you're saying there's little little upkeep maintenance? There's very little happening there. The way these things generally work is that somebody gives notice to the building department that there's something wrong. It's there's some site plan noncompliance. Somebody named Karen. <laughs> somebody. <laughs> and... Uh, and then they follow okay. up with it and look at the site plan to see what was supposed to be there. And if it's not there, then they can go to the owner and let them know that they have to comply with their site plan. Okay. I'm not quite but sure what was on the site plan, but it's, it's just, not like the building inspector is driving around and, and uh, flying every little thing. Yeah, no understandable. <coughs> I expect. 